Hello and welcome to the 2024 edition of my Pigs and Sight for Dummies Like Me course. The whole point of this mini-series is to give you a simple, streamlined workflow that's easy to do but gives you great results. And this is a workflow that I've been refining as part of my upcoming 2024 edition of my Deep Space course, so you might want to check that out as well. In today's video, we're just going to focus on the installation process because this can be surprisingly difficult. And for those of you that have already installed Pix and Sight, that's okay, you'll want to skip ahead a bit because I'm going to show you how to install all the optional plugins that we're going to need and more. The first thing you'll want to do is head over to PixInsight.com, go to the Licenses tab, and you can either request a free trial or purchase the commercial version. That might seem kind of strange because if you're just a normal person, you're not a business, so why do you have to get a commercial license? But that's just the way it is. One of the nice things though, is that because it is a quote unquote commercial license, you can install this on as many of your computers that you want. But if you're still on the fence on whether this is actually the program for you, then you're probably better off going with the free trial for right now. Either way, once you've got the free trial or you purchased it, then you want to check your email for further instructions. After you've read through that email and understand what's going on, you can come back here to pixinsight.com, go to downloads and click on software distribution. And even if you've already installed PixInsight, you'll still want to come in here and follow along with us. Because there was a fairly large update that came out yesterday on March 1st. And there's a new tool in there that you're definitely going to want. Anyway, you'll want to enter your new username and password, which you should have just set up. And then you'll click on Login. From here, we have access to a lot of important tools. The most important, of course, is the PixInsight file. you want to get the newer version down here. As of right now, that's version 1.8.9-2. There may be a newer version though when you're watching it. And you can tell when the last update was right here. Just make sure you're actually grabbing the correct version, whether you have Mac, Windows, or Linux, and then you can download that file. When that file is downloaded, you can run it. It will install PixInsight automatically. And now we need to get two more files, which are these Gaia databases that PixInsight will utilize. To keep this as simple as possible, start off with Gaia DR3. And there's a lot of files here. Each one takes almost three gigabytes. If you have the space, you could go through and download all of these. However, once you get through this first file, that's all the brightest stars. Everything else gets progressively dimmer and less useful. So for this reason, I only download the very first one right here, the Gaia DR3 1.0.0. Because for my imaging style, I don't need all these fainter stars. Again, if you've got the space and the willpower though, you could download all of them, that's up to you. We have now started our first download that was for the Gaia DR3. Then you're going to need the SP as well. You can either go for the complete set or the small set. If you go for the complete set, you have another large series of files that you need to download, which I don't recommend. For me, I just went with the small set and downloaded the very first file and that was good enough for me. Understand though that there is a difference between the DR3 and the DR3 SP. This will make more sense later, but it's good to just get all this stuff downloaded now. So we have it for later. If you have any questions regarding your PixInsight license, it should be here under license data. There's also the license reactivation if you need to run that. For right now though, we should be in a good place. So next what I want you to do is start up PixInsight for the first time. And if this is your first time starting up the program, you'll get an activation screen. This is where you'll need to enter your license key and some other information. All that information should have been included in the email that they sent over. But again, if it's not there, check the downloads page here for your license data. Once you get all that plugged in and it accepts it, you should now see this screen right here. The first thing I want you to do is install those star catalogs that we just downloaded. Here's the way to do that. We're going to start by going to our computer where you can see your different hard drives and we need to create a folder for these star catalogs. Naturally, I thought, well, okay, if I'm going to do this for PixInsight, let me go into my programs folder find the PixInsight folder and then create a folder for my star catalogs here. This is a bad idea though, for two reasons. The first is that there's a chance that this is a protected folder, which PixInsight cannot access. The second is that when you update PixInsight in the future, this folder tends to get wiped out. Therefore, you do not want to create a folder in your PixInsight directory. I personally have a secondary drive, which currently is for games, but on here, I've created a new folder called star catalogs. And inside, I've cut it and pasted the Gaia DR3 and the Gaia DR3 SP files. For those that download multiple files, you want to put them all in here. And of course, you'll find them in your downloads directory. So you can just grab them, 
cut them, and then paste them in your Star Catalogs folder. When you've done that, we'll go back to Pix Insight, go to Process, All Processes, and we're looking for the process called Gaia. When you get inside the Gaia window, there's a little wrench icon in the lower right. This is our preferences. And from here, we can select our DR3 and our DR3SP files, however many that you downloaded. For me, I just had one. So I'll click on Select, navigate to your Star Catalogs folder, make sure you are doing, in this case, the DR3 file, or maybe you have 10 of them, select them all, hit Open, then you'll switch over to the DR3SP, click on Select, go to that folder, and get all your SP versions as well. That's all there is to it. We can hit OK once you verify that you've got everything plugged in. And that's one big hurdle completed. Next, we're going to install all of the optional plugins. For this, we'll go up to Resources, Updates, Manage Repositories. With Manage Repositories, this is how we control all the different plugins that we have installed in Pig Insight. And as you can see, I have quite a few. I'm going to have all of these listed out down below the video. That way you can copy each one of the URLs and then paste them right here. For example, we have three plugins from Russell Croman, Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and then Star Exterminator. What you would do is come down below the video, grab the first URL, which let's say that's Star Exterminator, you'd copy it. Click on the Add button here in your Manage Repositories, paste in that URL, and then hit OK. Repeat that for all the different URLs that you see. This will take a minute or two, so feel free to pause the video until that's done. I do have one very important caveat here, though. One of the repositories is called rcastro.com TensorFlow Pixinsight GPU. This one is only required for NVIDIA users. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card on your computer, then if you install this, it will improve the performance of Pixinsight when using noise, blur, or star exterminator from Russell Croman. Without the TensorFlow, these are going to take a lot longer to run. I know that some of you might have installed the TensorFlow already the old-fashioned way, and if so, if you install this on top of it, it could cause problems. I will have a link down below with even more information, so be sure to read through that. But again, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, then don't bother with this one. You don't really need it. When it's complete, your list should look the same as mine. If so, we'll click on OK. Nothing really happens, so we go back up to Resources, Updates, Check for Updates. This will actually prompt the installation. I already have all my updates, but for you, it's going to list a bunch of different things. Just hit OK. It will go through and download everything. When the downloads are finished, you can hit OK again. And now we need to close out of Pixinsight and restart it to apply those updates. So we'll go to File, Quit Pixinsight. It will now prompt you for the installation. You'll hit yes. When that's complete, we can restart Pixinsight. Okay, you should now have everything installed and ready to go for our full workflows. Next, I want to make sure that you have the program configured properly. As far as I'm concerned, we have two main toolbars here in Pixinsight. The toolbar at the top and the toolbar on the left. And very often when I'm working with people, their toolbars are completely screwed up. So if you want to get things back to the default, which you see here, we'll go up to View, Show Control Bars, and then once you have Show Control Bars turned on, set them to the default. And perhaps you still have some tools that are not showing up. You could always go to the Toolbars menu and select anything you'd like to add, or turn off stuff that you're never going to use. I normally just stick with the default though, and that works fine. Moving on to our other toolbar here on the left, we have the Format Explorer, the Process Explorer, the Process Console, etc. Very often these will accidentally get closed out, and then people get confused on how to get them back. For this, you'll go back up to View, Explorer Windows, and the simplest thing to do is just click on each one and verify that they're on the left-hand toolbar. There is also the Process Console and Script Editor, you can click on those as well, and they should reappear. And in terms of using these things, we'll talk about that in the following video. Next, we're going to focus on the Pixinsight settings. For this, we'll go up to Edit, Global Preferences. And you have a ton of settings that you can play around with here, but I'm going to try to keep this as streamlined as possible. 
First, we're gonna to go to Core, UI Resources, and the number one problem that beginners have is the user interface size. Very often, it's too small. So here's what we're gonna do. If you have automatic UI scaling turned on, then you wanna turn that off and adjust the scaling factor. I would recommend starting off small, maybe even 1.5. This is very tricky to do though. It even says right here, if you hover over it, specifying a wrong scaling factor may yield an unusable core application. Do not change this parameter if you're not sure what you're doing. And this is a problem that myself and many others have had, is coming in here, putting in a wrong value, and then getting stuck. So again, if your interface looks fine, don't touch this. But if your interface is too small or too big, you want to come in here and try a different value. I'm just going to cut to the chase and put in a value that I know is too high. I'll go with 4. And to apply any of these settings, we need to look for the circle button in the lower left. If I hover over it, it says apply global, F6. Remember F6, that's going to come in handy later. When you click on the circle button, that will apply whatever you've done. Nothing's going to change though until we restart the program. Let's move on now to our other settings. One thing I'd like everybody to do is go down to miscellaneous image window settings and look for zoom it cursor. What this will allow you to do is zoom in and out wherever your cursor is on the photo using the scroll wheel on your mouse. That makes it very easy. If this is turned off, make sure you turn it on. And if you find that the zoom direction is inverted from what you're used to, you can change that here under wheel direction to either forward or backward. Again, this will all be stuff that you'll test here in a minute, but this is how you adjust the direction of the zoom. The final thing I want to talk about are parallel processing and threads. This is how to configure PixInsight to make the full use of your system. The computer that I'm recording on has an NVIDIA 4090, an Intel 13900K, a bunch of RAM, and a bunch of storage space. Because this computer is so powerful, I want to make the most of this system. And I'll have some articles listed down below which will explain how to adjust these settings because we don't have time to get into it today. Just understand that this is something that you'll want to play around with if you have a powerful computer. When you've got everything configured, we'll click on the circle button one more time. And now what we're going to do is verify that our new UI scaling factor looks good. I put in a value of 4. I do not recommend you do that. Again, start with like 1.25, maybe 1.5 and try that if the interface was too small. Then we'll restart PixInsight. And if you screwed up the UI scaling factor like I did, it might look something like this. As I said, it's unusable. To fix this, we'll go back up to Edit, Global Preferences, Core, UI Resources, and now you can change the UI scaling factor down to a smaller value. If you did a value of 2 and everything looks crazy, try 1.5 or even 1.25. For me, a scaling factor of 2 works well. The problem we have though is that there's no way to access the circle button. It's hidden away. That's why I want you to remember F6. F6 will apply whatever settings we have. And that's how we overcome this problem. So if I click on F6, that should have gone through. We can now restart Pix and Set again. And that looks way better. We've saved the day. I realize that some of you still need to fine tune your UI scale. So you just go back to Edit, Global Preferences, Core UI Resources. We can now adjust the size of this window. We really got to adjust it, I guess. There we go. So if you have to, keep trying different scaling factors until it looks good, and then we'll be just about done for today. There's one final thing that we have to do today, and that is to either purchase the three plugins from Russell Croman or get a free trial. Because if you go over to your Process Explorer on the left and you look for Star Exterminator or Blur Exterminator or whatever, you will not be able to run it until you purchase a license or again do the free trial. So here's what you want to do. Head over to rcastro.com and we're looking for Star Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and Blur Exterminator. Technically, we've installed all three. We just don't have the license yet. And so you'll either request a free trial for each one or purchase them. I'd recommend you buy them because they are really good. But if you're still on the fence about Pix and Sight, a free trial is the way to go. When you do that, you'll go to your account, look for the licenses, and it will show you all the different products that you have, even if you're just doing the free trial. Then you'll come back to Pix and Sight. You'll open up Star Exterminator, Blur Exterminator, and Noise Exterminator. I know I went through that quickly, but another way you can do this is under Process, All Processes, and look for them manually over here. We've got Blur, Noise, and Star Exterminator. When you've got all three loaded up though, you'll click on the wrench icon, and it will prompt you for the email address and the license key for each one of these programs. 
be sure to go through and license all three of these programs and then you're ready for the second video where I'm going to explain the user interface and make sure you're comfortable using PixInsight.